Well, with Regulation 1.09 and Dark Souls 3 coming out on July 1st, a lot of the weapons that had self-buffs as their weapon arts have had the durations of those self-buffs extended. The first one we looked at a little while ago was the Great Sword of Judgment, which actually received about a double time on, or a little bit more than a double time on its self-buff. I, I counted up to like 27, but it's probably something more like 30, 35 seconds. Um, I actually did use a stopwatch on this bad boy, the Lorian Greatsword, and I counted 45 seconds on that stopwatch for how much the L2, just the regular old stomp infusion of the fire, lasts for now. That's a significant upgrade from its original value of 15 seconds, and it can really make a severe difference and make the sword a more competitive now in the ultra weapons arena or ultra weapon class i should say uh this was the first sword that actually got me into using ultra great swords and it was a very good sword don't get me wrong but it was just outclassed by other swords like the lothric great sword simply because you could buff this with a resin and get extra lightning damage on top of the already imbued lightning damage in the weapon itself however um you can see here while you're two-handing the refined lothric great sword you go up to 690 damage but right now with the Lorian Greatsword, we have 751, and we do fire instead of lightning. While the Lothric Greatsword is arguably still better, the refund, or sorry, the Lorian Greatsword does have something going for it, and that is that when you do the stomp, it does provide a lane of fire in front of you that kind of keeps you safe if you miss with your stomp and your opponent tries to come in and punish you from the front. Um, they will get hit by the fire and it will stop them in their tracks, keeping you safe uh, longer and be able to recover from the uppercut, assuming that you didn't waste all your stamina. Now, if they have to roll to the side and approach from the side, you will still likely have time to recover from the uppercut and be able to roll away, which is a nice convenience to have available to you that other Ultra Great Swords don't have. Now, with that said, the uh, normal damage from the Lorian's Great Sword when you one-hand it, five, or sorry, six. 53. Nobody really one hand, one hands uh, Ultra Great Swords anyways. We always want to two-hand it so that we can avoid parries. And we go up to 671. So if we go ahead and compare again. So 653. Okay, 671. So we gain just about, what is that, 18 points of damage. And then of course when we do the weapon art from 671... Okay, we go to 751. So that's a buff of about 80 points of damage. And again, it lasts for 45 seconds. So that's a, a pretty good upgrade and makes this weapon a lot more viable because one of the weaknesses in PvP was the fact that you had to activate this and then try to hit your opponent within 15 seconds if you wanted that extra 100 points of fire damage. Now that's not the case. Now this weapon can compete with the other Ultra Great Swords in its class, like I mentioned without needing a resin and the actual stomp it is still a good move to throw out even though you don't follow it up with the uppercut because it kind of scares opponents um, if they end up contesting you you know you can whip out the uppercut and see if you can catch them and deal a massive amount of damage um, but even just whipping it out and then having your weapon buff for 45 seconds as we know some duels in pvp last only 45 seconds or less some of them may last a minute or over a minute or a minute 30 that only takes 20 fp to buff this weapon twice so it's not much at all and like I said, now you can actually not have to worry about trying to activate your buff and rush on your opponent. You have 45 seconds to kind of deal with that. Um, and if the match does last longer than normal, unlike the Lothric Greatsword where you might not have time to apply another resin, this just takes another quick stomp and you're back in business with the extra AR added onto the sword. So it does make it a lot more viable in PvP. And as a result, we went back and we tried it and we won every single match we played. We played eight matches, I think and uh, we didn't lose a single one. Uh, being an Ultra Great Sword, it's been a while since I played with one of these and these are my bread and butter so to speak. It's what I love to use mostly in the Pontiff area and we just absolutely dominated and it was, uh, it was a fun time. It was a fun time for sure. Now there is one minor drawback that I will note with this sword and um, you can see as I run around as the weapon is buffed that it kind of leaves this trail of fire and it may not seem like it, but when I was PvPing and I was constantly locked onto somebody, it was somewhat obscuring my view as I was strafing back and forth. And that could be a bit of a detriment as it can be hard to see what your opponent is doing, especially with smaller weapons. Um, so just if you find yourself um, in like a blind spot when you're moving around, maybe just try to not move around so much or play a little bit more reactive. But it shouldn't be too much of a detriment. 
being an ultra great sword you know if you see your enemy flinching or coming to attack you um just whip out the r1 trade with them deal a massive amount of damage and you're good to go anyways but i did find it to be one sm small 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 very minor setback to having this weapon last for so long um but again you can always switch it out if you find it really really annoying let's go ahead and take a look at some pvp and see how the weapon performs